everybody, I'm Jim Petrell, broker and founder of Arden Real Estate Services, Jim Petrell Real Estate Team. You know us as that, that real estate team that does all that great charity work. We give back to the community as much as we possibly can. Uh, what I'm going to talk about today is something I, I don't normally do. I'm going to talk about what I consider probably the most horrible piece of legislation that I think I've ever seen, Prop 15. I've never done one of these political type videos before, but I simply have to speak on out on this one. Uh, at the end of my talk about Prop 15, I will tell you what I'm seeing is going on in the real estate market today. So stay tuned for that. That's some good info coming. So Prop 15 is a blank check tax hike, tax hike aimed at property owners, but not just property owners. And I'll explain that a little bit later on. The proposed bill, Prop 15, is that the politicians cleverly named the School Improvement Initiative, which I thought was creative. It's actually just a massive tax hike. Uh, of course, the politicians never used the word tax hike in this bill, but very way down, they use the word changed assessment. That's a tax hike. All right, I believe it's because they call Prop 15 what it really is, a tax hike, nobody built for it. Prop 15 bill is designed to gut Proposition 13, which was a bill overwhelmingly passed in California back in 1978 that reduced taxes on homes, businesses, and farms. It also limited how much the politicians and the state can increase the annual taxes for a property owner that they have to pay each year. The limit was set at a maximum increase of just 2% per year. That's manageable. Basically, Prop 15 is a massive tax increase to people that own property, businesses, and farms. Now, many people who don't own any of those things may think, well, that's great, make the other guy pay. I get that, I can see how you might think that way. However, what do you think business owners are going to do when their taxes skyrocket? That's right, they're gonna pass those increases in prices and for goods and services onto the consumer, or they're gonna go out of business and buy by jobs. Business owners simply can't absorb the expenses like this, so you, the consumer, you get to pay for this tax increase. Along those lines, people who rent their homes and businesses may think the same thing. Make the owner pay. Again, I can see how you might think that. However, do you think the owner of the rental property or the business uh, is gonna simply absorb that expense? Of course not, they can't. So they're going to increase the rent that you pay. So in both, ca in both cases, it's actually not the other guy. In both cases, it's you. What will, be, what will we be paying for in Prop 15? As I mentioned, these politicians, and I like politicians much, by the way, politicians are cleverly calling this proposition the School Improvement Initiative. But is it really for that? My guess is no. I guess that because the funds from this bill are not going in any special account to pay for schools, those funds from this massive tax hike are instead going into the state general fund. Now, folks, I've been on this earth for 50 years now, or actually in a couple weeks, it'll be 50 years. And I remember as a kid, my mom telling me that anytime politicians want more money, they simply create a bill saying it's for the schools and people vote for it. However, she went on, once the money goes into that general fund, it disappears. She further explained that the amount of money that does go to the schools from wherever that bill passes also happens to correlate with the reduction in funds the state would traditionally be allocating. So in my mom's words, it's just a shell game and the net result is the politicians get you to vote themselves more of your money for their general fund. So here's a great example of the money that went into the general fund. Do any of you older people watching this remember how the state of California got the lottery bill passed in 1984? I remember the ads myself. I was a kid. Um, they always say it was all for the schools. It's for the kids. The kids win. I remember that clearly. You see improvements in the schools and after that bill passed and all that massive amount of money poured into those schools? Nope. I know that because I was a freshman in high school back in 1984. Um, I never saw any improvements at all. The physics department, still, we still didn't have money for our experiments. And my football equipment was still old and falling apart. So that money apparently never made it to my school. And I guess the kids didn't win. So what about proposition in the year 2000 that was called lottery funds for textbooks? Well, that passed. All right, again, for the schools. But have we seen a massive improvements in our kids' textbooks? I haven't. And I know that because I have kids in school. So I haven't seen that. So let's go further. You remember that temporary gas tax back in 1990 that was designed to improve the roads. Two things about that. One, roads never got fixed. And two, that tax, that temporary tax uh, hike didn't end up being temporary. 30 years later, it's still here. Then not long ago, we voted for even more gas tax to again, fix the roads. So with all that extra money that we pay, highest in the country, um, Right now, California is ranked 48th out of 50 in the condition of our roads. So good job, general fund, on that one. See, everybody, what happens when the money goes into the general fund, the politicians say that 
that it's for whatever they believe we want, then once they have it, they spend it however they want to. So as you get closer to the election, you're going to see ads on TV stating that if the tax taxpayers don't pass this Prop 15, the state will have to cut funding for our schools. They will have to start late and end early, that our children will suffer. I guarantee you, you're going to see all of that. You will see all the threats to our children while the state is still spending billions on a high-speed railway that goes from Baker to Barstow. It's just one example. So who's going to use that? Doing the math, that's $89 million per mile. For what? That's just one example of a waste. There's tons of wastes. So politicians have no problem, and I'm going on politicians, I know, and I just I can't stand them. Uh, politicians have no problem spending money on government waste, but they apparently do have problems spending money on our children. They're going to say that without Prop 15 that our children are going to suffer. That's the message you're going to be seeing soon enough. So here's my thought on that. How about this instead, politicians? How about you spend responsibly and stop wasting it? I can go on and on about my thoughts on politicians, and, and I now really understand why my parents hated politicians so much. But that's not what this video is about. It's about this horrible piece of legislation called Prop 15, so let's get back to that. So right now, Prop 15 is aimed at just businesses, commercial areas, and industrial locations. But if this passes, the politicians, and I'm 100% guarantee, are going to use this as the lever they need to totally eliminate Prop 13. Remember, Prop 13 limits, passed in 1978, limits how much property taxes the state can charge homeowners each year. An elimination of Prop 13 will have significant impact to the California real estate market. Whether you own property or not, it will have a significant impact on you. Think about what it mean to you if your mortgage payment or rent goes up dramatically because of this tax hike. Then it goes up again next year, and again the next year. Think about those people on fixed incomes. What do retirees do if their mortgage or rent payments go up drastically due to this higher property taxes? The implications of this Prop 15 are extreme. If you have a significant amount of your net worth in real estate, like most people do, or you intend on making a lot of money uh, on real estate, like I teach people to do in my seminars, then you really need to pay attention to this initiative. As of right now, Prop 15 is leading in the polls. Folks, this can't happen, right? You need to stop the politicians in this one. Shut them down and shut down 15. First of all, Prop 15, it's not for our kids. Don't buy that line of BS. Second, the second, it's a stepping stone to the total elimination of Prop 13, something we can easily hurt you no matter who you are or what you do or do not own. So at the beginning of this article, I talked about, or beginning of this thing, I talked about, um, I would give a, a little bit of speech about what I'm, I'm seeing in real estate. So again, I'm Jim Vitrell, the number one real estate agent in San Diego County. I sell more houses than anybody. So this is what I'm seeing what's happening on the ground. One, we have a very strong market. Um, there's a limited inventory, which is driving prices up, and there's tons of buyers going out there. Normally, when you have a disproportionate amount of number of buyers, more buyers than you have sellers, you call that a seller's market, it's driving prices up. However, I'm kind of seeing this a little bit different than everybody else. I think it's actually both. I think it's a seller's market and it's a buyer's market. Yes, it's hard for buyers to get their offers accepted, but sellers, seller's market because they're getting their prices. Prices are going up. But buyers, it's also a buyer's market because the interest rates are so stupid low that they're getting the payment they want. So interesting enough, everybody wins in this one. So that is a really cool market. And I've been doing this for a long, long time. And it's the first time I've ever seen this. Another thing that I'm seeing, and this one's an alarming trend, sellers are leaving California. Now, back when I started real estate and forever up until like a year or two ago, that anytime you ever got a listing, that was two sales. I mean, the, we're going to sell their home and we're going to help them buy another home. But 2020, totally different. About 80% of all of my listings, every seller, 80% of them, that say, hey, Jim, I need you to sell your home, they're leaving California. They're taking their money that they've made, their massive gains, gargantuan gains, and leaving California. That is concerning to me. And I think that people that have been here for a long time, they're, just, they're honestly just kind of sick of it, and they're leaving. And there's nothing I can do about it, but the money is leaving California. You can even see the politicians are now putting up legislation that anybody who leaves California, they're going to try and continue to tax them for another 10 years, which I think is ridiculous. I think it's unconstitutional. But whatever, the, the politicians are now seeing what's happening from their policies, which I don't love. Um, we're also going to see right now we have, due to this uh, uh, COVID-19, um, we have a moratorium on rents. You can't evict a tenant who's not paying. Um, mortgage companies can't foreclose on somebody who's not paying. At some point in time, that's going to end. So what then? Well, what we're gonna see is an increase in the number of homes for sale. I do not believe this is gonna be anything like 2006, 7, 8, and 9, where we had a market crash. Um, that was a market that was designed or was created because 
lenders were giving anybody any money. I mean, I had a, a, an E7, a gunny that worked for me in the Marine Corps back in the day. And in two years, he bought 18 homes with no money down. He didn't use his VA loan. It's just the lenders were just literally just giving it away. There's no reason somebody can buy 18 homes in two years. Uh, we haven't had any of that. In fact, since 2009, the mortgage paper that's been written, the quality of the mortgage loans is higher than I think it ever has been in this country's history. So these are very good, highly qualified people that bought all these homes since 2009. So it's solid, solid paper. It's not anything like it was before. However, there are a lot of people who lost their jobs. There are a lot of people who haven't been able to pay their mortgages. The banks are going to want that them to pay this off. Now, do they want to foreclose? I think banks got, I mean, they got spanked hard back in 2000. They lost a lot of money. And there was this thing where the government was saying they're too big to fail. So if they lost $300,000 in a house, the government stroked out a check and gave them 300 grand. I don't see that happening. All right. So the banks are going to have to be a little bit smarter this time. I don't think they're going to do big foreclosures. Plus, even if they wanted to, the people have equity. People can sell these homes and make cash tax-free. So I think they're okay. I don't see a massive number of homes hitting the market. I certainly don't see a big foreclosure market. I don't see a big short sale market. I just see more houses coming on the market, which is good because we have five times as many buyers as there is for every home right now. So I think we're going to be fine. Um, and that is my, uh, my real estate input. Sorry about going off on the politicians so much. I just really don't like them. And, uh, and I, I totally get what my parents uh, were saying all those years. So and again, I'm Jim Patrell, broker and founder of Arden Real Estate Services, Jim Patrell Real Estate Team. You can give us a call. If you have any questions about any of this stuff, I'd love to talk to you about it. Just give us a call, 533-0532. That's 760-533-0532. Have a great day. Thank you very much.